you know, it's funny, um, maybe it was a bit of background, right? I don't know if a lot of people realize this. So we had this crazy market run up over six months. And guess what stock hasn't really gone up at all? In fact, is down over the last six months. Well, AMD. Well, NVIDIA. Yeah. <laughs> NVIDIA. So NVIDIA had this meteoric rise. And then they had the split and then they rose. And I mean, the company became the most valuable in the world. And this and that. I mean, it's still over $3 trillion. But interestingly enough, as we've had this kind of melt up, this big bubble of assets, you know, fart coin hits a billion dollars in market cap and the hot claw coin. And, but I'm saying like the overall market, the broadening out, the, uh, the Qubit company that used to be a beverage company, it hit 1.56 billion in, in market cap. I on Q it went to $43. I mean, in quantum what, what, on less than a hundred million of revenue, not a bad company, actually a very interesting company. But having said that, like we've seen this frothiness, right, in the market. Well, NVIDIA, who's actually grown into this really low multiple, has kind of gone quiet. And I think right now it's an interesting moment um, to kind of say, what is NVIDIA up to? And we all know Blackwell is ramping, but what else is NVIDIA doing? You know, and that's a really interesting thing. So we have CES coming up and it seems with some... um, you know, some of the events and some of the stuff that NVIDIA is talking about publicly about CES, that there might be some interesting news coming. But NVIDIA also uh, pulled something out of the oven this week. Uh, it was literally uh, Jensen doing his thing. Um, <clears throat> Pat, you and I have both talked a lot on this show about kind of AI and, and just edge computing as a whole. Um, well, one of the big opportunities, you know, when you think about where we're going to head, whether it's uh, you know, small robots in factories or humanoid robots is going to be building these powerful AI uh, computing platforms for the edge. And so there's been a product from NVIDIA called Jetson Orin, um, and they released a new one that's about 80 times more powerful now. It's a $250 edge device, um, comes in eight gig, four gig versions, uh, 10, 1,024 core, um, 32 tensors. It's, you know, just kind of running down the specs. And basically, it's used for all kinds of different edge robotics use cases. This is a big expansion opportunity. What I've been saying over the last several months is, you know, NVIDIA needs to start talking about what else. What are the other ways it's going to make money? It's not that the data data center stuff's not amazing. It's just, are we going to see robots? Are we going to see more energy go back into automotive? Are we going to see the next wave of, of, you know, of uh, personal computing, gaming, et cetera, from NVIDIA? Where does the next big moat come from? And of course, all this stuff really ties together. So this announcement was incremental. But, you know, when you start looking at the volume of robot, the volume of edge AI use cases, it's another really big opportunity for revenue stream. So that came out of the oven, literally. That's how Jensen presented it. He pulled it out of his oven and walked it out and put it on the table, this $250 device. And really quickly, another announcement, which, which I think is another one from Strange Bedfellows, Pat. Um, was Apple and NVIDIA um, announced this week a, a new, uh, something they're calling Redrafter, which was a collaboration between Apple and NVIDIA and, and using a novel technique for accelerating text generation in LLMs. Um, what they've basically done is work together to make an optimized something that's going to be done on NVIDIA hardware using beam search and dynamic tree attention. These are kind of technical terms, but it's really about multiple text sequences, which is beam search. So like, you know, obviously every time you put a query in, there's endless a number of options of the text that can be created. Speeding that up speeds up inference, improves performance. Um, And then obviously reducing the redundancy. So that's the dynamic tree is that, you know, not having redundant, um, uh, you know, overlaps in those expected sequences, which is the text that it is used to generate. Um, So basically they integrated this into NVIDIA's tensor framework um, and effectively what they've done is, is make this run like 2.7 times faster in generating tokens versus, you know, the way it's done today. Um, probably what's most interesting, though, about this whole thing to me, Pat, is just it, it, Apple has been almost obstinate about doing anything with NVIDIA. You know, they've really oh, stayed, yeah. away. they've stayed away from NVIDIA, any public kind of notoriety about utilization of NVIDIA hardware. They partnered with Google to kind of do all the, you know, work they're planning on doing with Apple intelligence on the hardware side. And they've recently announced, or at least, I don't know if it's publicly announced by Apple. I think it was just a rumor drop, but was that Broadcom is going to be helping Apple develop its next generation AI chip. So kind of a big win. Another thing is NVIDIA has 
perpetually felt it's under appreciated for what it does in inference. And so these kinds of technologies um, and of course, a partnership with Apple probably should be seen as a, as a positive catalyst. So Jetson is 10 years old and a lot of people have forgotten this. And we've had, a, there's been a lot of market thesis about whether, you know, when is the edge uh, going to take off in a monumental way? And I think that NVIDIA over the past two quarters, even on their earnings announcements, have been dedicating a portion of the time to robotics. And you accurately said that it is one of the next big things that could hit. Uh, automotive could be another one, but gosh, Qualcomm is just giving it some heavy duty, heavy duty competition there. Um, and they need to move this this forward. So I think this is part of the reminding people that, you know, there's a growth, you know, we don't just do data center because there will be a time when that percentage growth uh, uh, goes down and there might be even a time that quarter on quarter, the actual number goes down. And this is just, you know, they're playing the long game here and investing on what is gonna be the next big thing. I think this is pretty aligned with what's happening in China uh, with robots. And by the way, uh, China has about 100x more robots than we do here in the United States. It's aligned with what some of the forward looking thinkers uh, like Elon Musk are, are driving uh, forward. Elon will probably use his own chip, uh, probably a, a derivative off of uh, Dojo. But, you know, we, we will uh, see uh, on that, you know, one thing on this Apple NVIDIA thing, you know, Apple did announce at reInvent that that essentially they had already gone big with AWS and they flashed, you know, they're testing out Tranium 2, they're using Graviton and they're using multiple services from AWS. So, you know, this this Google Apple thing might just be on the training side, but uh, you know, one thing while we're here, uh, there was also an NVIDIA announcement. I mean, NVIDIA continues to invest uh, to create its own, essentially its own hyperscaler. Uh, some of them have been by proxy, kind of a tier two CSP. You look at the investments in CoreWeave uh, and, and other companies. You look at AMD's investment in Vulture. Um, so the market is aligning. Uh, Nvidia is, you know, is reacting to these companies standing up their own uh, ASICs. So really, really uh, cool, uh, cool stuff. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Pat. And yeah, it's interesting to kind of think the partnership on the training side. I mean, ultimately it delivers better inference, but Apple's got a lot of work to do to build these models that are going to be compelling. The early readout on intelligence is pretty meh. Um, Interesting though, Dan, they, they, they've they actually gotten accolades on the research, but they can't seem to convert that into uh, meeting the expectation of what Apple intelligence is supposed to be. Yeah. I can't, I can't actually figure it out, Pat. And this is a kind of an interesting segue to the next topic, but I, I just can't figure out Apple's almost to 4 trillion now. Smartphone shipments aren't up. Their AI stuff isn't particularly uh, impressive so far. I mean, their, their sales are like flat to like multi years ago right now on iPhone. I, I, just, I don't understand it. 